Yeah, I was in Baghdad actually a year ago reporting on the situation that Iraqis who had worked with Americans found themselves in. And it was a really dire situation. Their stories were of being targeted by insurgents and militias and even the Iraqi government. And a lot of them were beginning to leave the country because some have been killed and those who have not been killed have found that the American government is, to say the least, a little lackadaisical about providing security for them. He said, why do you work as an agent of the occupier? There is no safe place for traitors in Iraq. Did he threaten you? Because I will personally break his fucking head if he ever messes with you. So this is a problem for us. The Baptists are making people believe that Iraqis like me are traitors. Uh, we are giving up Iraqis with false information and women are getting raped. You must put your message on television in a way that Iraqis can understand. They, they see nothing from Americans. Uh, they get nothing from Americans. It, it, it's very dangerous for you and me. It's way above my pay grade, Al. I was naive. I believed the Americans wouldn't lie to us. We were friends, yeah, but they didn't trust us. That was my first shock. Nobody's looking out for you. The structure of the play has these two Iraqis in the Palestine Hotel talking over the years of the war, reminiscing. And that gives me the chance to tell their stories through scenes in flashback. But there's also a situation they're in now, in the hotel room, which is that one of them is in great danger and doesn't know what to do, and he's turned to his friend for help. This one I know, Mahdi Army. Okay, you are totally screwed. <laughs> they made an offer I can't refuse. What offer? When this phone rings, they will want an answer. Okay, leave the country. I tried. I didn't even get to the Syrian side. Iraqi police stopped me at the border with some uh, new American technology. <laughs> Guess what? Uh, my passport is a fake. I was from the passport fixer. Yeah. He took my $600 and he sold me a piece of garbage. I was lucky they didn't arrest me. So I had to come home again. No passport, no money, just more threats. Okay, uh, try again with your national ID. The Syrians... Forget are... it! At the border, I heard the Syrians have started to require a visa. It's just like Jordan now. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. They will to... never give me asylum. They will never give me a visa. Why? Because to do so would mean to admit they have failed in Iraq. And this was a direct quote from one of my interviews, a lot of the dialogue in the play comes out of those interviews, and it was a pretty widespread feeling among Iraqis. There's a scene that I wrote very late in the rehearsal process that has the two main Iraqi characters who begin and end in the hotel room, and a third Iraqi, a woman, who goes to work in the same office at the U.S. Embassy, are all sitting around in their office talking to each other while they're working, and the conversation goes to the past and the, the future and how they see themselves in five years. Okay, five years. Working at UNESCO in Paris, bringing English literature to Arab countries, especially the books we were not allowed to read. Nice. Cooking French dinners in my apartment. My brothers and sister will visit me on holidays and with my family, we will all learn to ski together and I will be the first one down the mountain. You will be married to some French guy named Jean. Oh, oh, not so fast. I will be married to my career. Not first. And they all have the, their own fantasies, and their fantasies are maybe a little improbable, but not out of the question. But at, at the end, Adnan, who really is kind of the, the moral center of the play, basically tells them, Maybe I will be the editor of a famous liberal newspaper. Cool. Maybe I will be listening to jazz in New York City. Super cool. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I will be uh, selling books again on Mutanabi Street for cigarettes. Not cool. Impossible. Anything is possible now in Iraq. Maybe all of us will be somewhere hiding from militias and insurgents in a spider hole like Saddam or on a smuggler's truck going to Syria. Anything is possible. 